The other day, my fiance and I were doing our new moon manifesting journaling, and I was explaining to him how I keep up with my manifestations and how he can too. And he liked it so much, he thought that I should have recorded myself explaining it. So I was like, oh, well, I can do that. So I thought it would be a good video for anyone struggling to understand how to keep up with their manifestations once they've set them. So let's go. Hello, my beautiful 600,000 Mystic Marvels, and welcome to the baby elephant community. I mean, the bee community, if you know, you know. On this channel, we talk about the law of attraction, spirituality, self-development, and so much more. And today I wanna to share with you how I keep up with my manifestation practice, how I tend to my wishes once I've set my intentions. I also want to invite you to our autumn solstice manifestation ceremony. It's live on Zoom. You can join in from whatever. It's gonna be September 21st, I believe, at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Make sure to check the date in the event. It might change by the time that this goes up, but we're going to set intentions together, check in with our thought forms. We're gonna journal, we're gonna meditate. We're gonna be with our community and enjoy a healing, beautiful sound bath experience. Tickets always sell out super fast, so if you wanna be there, make sure you get yours in the description below. And now let's talk about thought forms and manifestations. So as humans, we're technically humans, right? Of course, we have this soul that's lived in many different lifetimes and many different forms, but for the sake of this conversation, we are humans and we live primarily in 3D reality, the reality that you and I can see here, the reality that we can touch, we can feel things, this is real, it's not a green screen, it's not an illusion, right? Anything that is felt and can be measured is in 3D reality. Some of us jump in and out of higher dimensions, like perhaps the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension, and then there's enlightened masters who can go even higher, like the sixth and seventh. The fourth dimension is sometimes thought of as the time dimension. So in a way we're ruled by it, right? However, the fourth dimension is also quite commonly known as the astral and thought realm. In our dreams, when we go to sleep, we visit this fourth dimension the astral realm. That's where our dreams kind of occur. And in the fourth dimension, all thoughts and all ideas that ever were exist. And the way that I see it is in the fourth dimension, there's kind of a separation. Part of it is the thought realm and a part of it is the astral realm. And they kind of coincide and like are on top of each other in an interesting way. The fourth dimension works in this cyclical matter. Any idea that we have ever had comes from higher dimensions. Most often the fourth dimension is things that want to come into creation, into physicality, because in the fourth dimension is where we have those ideas that want to be degraded into 3D. Any idea that we feel like we came up with and any desire that we have, any sort of motivation is sort of uploaded to the fourth dimension where it becomes an entity. So in the fourth dimension, our ideas, our thoughts, and our feelings act as entities beings and thought forms. So when we download information like channelers download and you know, you and I come up with ideas that feels like it's not from here, right? We receive this information from this other realm. When we have a desire, the idea is created in the fourth dimension and in order to manifest it, it has to come in to the third dimension. This movement from the fourth dimension into the third dimension is the act of manifestation, of making something manifest. So anything that we do physically to manifest, whether it be affirmations or journaling or rituals or ceremonies or scripting, whatever it is, any one of our desires of our thoughts becomes an entity in the fourth dimension. So in order for it to manifest, we have to bring it into the third dimension, into this world. And this is called creation, the type of creation humans were gifted with, right? This is the gift from the creator making us into creators. We bring these entities into the third dimension through nourishing them, feeding them, and making them more dense with our thoughts, with our emotions, our attention, and our energy. The more positive energy we give to our positive desires, the more they can come into creation in the third dimension. So I know that might be a bit convoluted, but I hope that at least for some of you, hearing it this way, the process of manifesting this way, made something click. So now I wanna talk about how you can take this understanding and process and keep up with your manifestations, feeding them that positive energy, that attention and that emotion. This is what I do. What I do is around the new moon, most often specifically in the one or two days after the new moon, when there is that sliver in the sky, I set my intentions. And these intentions might be the same as they were the month before if they haven't come into manifestation yet. Or I could add new ones now too. Each new moon I sit with these desires 
and I bring my attention back onto what I am still in the process of bringing into creation. And then I set intentions for new ones as well. So I write them down as if I already have them. I make a gratitude list and I add them to the list as if I'm expressing gratitude that they exist already. So this is a method that I've taught a lot and I've shared a lot on this channel. And you can do this at home, of course. You can do this on, in your own rituals. Basically, what you do is you just write down a list of 10 things you're grateful for and then add to the bottom of that list the things that you're calling in, that you're manifesting, but you're adding them to your gratitude list as if they've already come. This is one of the methods we'll be using in the Autumn Equinox event, which I think I called Autumn Solstice in the beginning of this video. And if I did, excuse me. So in this way, what I'm doing is I'm infusing my existing and my new thought forms with my energy by taking my physical time and my energy to sit with them. Also giving them attention, which is different th from the common set it and forget it, which we're going to talk about shortly. I'm also feeling gratitude and excitement as I write them out as if they're already happening, which is feeding them more emotions. It's feeding them the emotions, the positive emotions of gratitude and excitement. So I feed my thought forms all of its favorite food, just like a plant needs sunshine and water. Thought forms need energy, attention and emotion in order to bloom into our lives. So if you want something positive to happen, you want to feed it with positive energy. This is why set it and forget it might work for people who tend to think more negatively or have anxiety or bad feelings around the things that they're calling in. If thinking about what you're calling in doesn't make you happy because you get so nervous and worried, you're much better off setting it and forgetting it. But then you're not just not going to do anything, right? What you need to do is if you're the set it and forget it type is you need to make sure you're living a high vibrational life. You need to make sure that you're doing your gratitude list. You're taking yourself out on fun dates. You're having fun in general and enjoying your life because if you can't give your thought forms direct positive energy and attention because you need to forget about them in order to not think negatively about them, then you need to live in the same emotional frequency you would be once you have them. And just a side note, your list of the things you want in present tense, of course, they don't need to be made on the new moon. You can start now. You can start whenever. The fact that I keep this ritual in which I do it around the same time each month with a reason, with an intention, is just another way that I feed these desires through ritual, right? That's why we often have these new moon ceremonies that I like to manifest together in community because not only are we doing this ritual and paying attention to our desires and feeding our thought forms, but we're also enhancing our energy through community. We're all adding to each other's energy. Everything I've ever wanted to come into fruition has manifested this way. Some things took a year's worth of monthly thought form maintenance, checking back in with them and feeding them a lot of positive energy and all, of course, working through the limiting beliefs that come up around them. Some things took a day. Some things took six months while others took two weeks. In my practice, I firmly believe in divine timing. Of course, you could always give a deadline for your desires and check in with them until they come into fruition. I just don't like to do that because I do want to leave that part up to the divine. So in short, what I do is I check in with my manifestations once a month, every month on the new moon. Your schedule might be different, right? You might want to do it every Monday night or every two weeks. Just remember that it has to stay fun so that you can remain in the frequency of your desires. My loves, I hope this helped. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did, a comment. And oh, by the way, I heard this crazy rumor. I'm not sure if you heard it, but apparently anyone who subscribes to my channel and turns on their post notifications, every time they receive a notification on their phone that I've posted, they have a lucky day where everything goes their way. I don't know about you, but I turned my own post notifications on for my own channel just in case. So maybe you should do that too. I hope to see you at the autumn equinox ceremony. And until next time, as always, I love you and keep your vibrations way, way, way up. Bye. <laughs>